Darling, telephone. It's probably those confounded electric light people again. I'll tell them I thought of a wizard end for a short story. And hope to get it published next month. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Billington's flat. It's mine too, in a way. Who? Oh. Oh, good morning. Uh, what can we do for you? Steffi, Steffi, quick! I'm afraid she's booked up every day this week. Yes, not a day free. Is it done? Uh, when? A Thursday week. Oh, well, if you'll hold on, I'll look at her engagement book. What is it? Export Fashion Fair Company. Oh, good, Bill. What do they want? Well, they want you to model that gown that they advertised in last month's thingy at the Fashion Fair Gala on Thursday week. Yes, she seems to be free that evening. How much? Five guineas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 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 ten guineas. Not a penny less. Oh, and expenses, too. Yes? Yes. Yes. You'll send the cloak and gown on the deck. Thank you very much. Good day to you. I thought I did that rather well. Ten guineas is wonderful, darling. Can we eat out tonight? Save you washing up, please. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Who? Name of Olive. Say, you're only the seventh guy that's rung me in the last hour. We can't take any more reservations for England for a month. Can't you hear? I said a month. Listen, you park-faced rat, I want a reservation on the next plane that leaves the ground. Now, see here, I don't take that line of talk with anybody. What did you say? Lou Gatson. Yeah. Gatsman. I'm a great pal of Lou's. We're just buddies. You ought to see us together. When I take a dislike to a guy on account I can't get something I want, Lou takes a dislike to him too. And when Lou takes a dislike to a guy, something mostly happens to him. Oh, sure, Mr. Oliver, sure. I'll fix it for you. You'll have a seat on the plane leaving on Monday. Yes, sir. Oh, you'll find everything in order. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Excuse me, do you have a telephone directory? Telephone directory? Yes, sir. Which one? Which one? You have mint flavored? What letter does the name begin with, sir? Oh. C for Carling. Richard. Richard Carling. Telephone number? I don't want the telephone number. I want the address. The address is... Of course I expect you. And I hope our acquaintance will be extended. Well, such poor hospitality as I can offer is waiting. And tonight... <laughs> as you say, who knows? Well, up to now you seem to have existed mainly in telephone conversations. Ah, half an hour. Good. I'll be waiting. No, not goodbye. Au revoir.
Ah, it's you at last, Curtin. Come in. I expected you at 10. It's now past 11. I was late leaving Leicester. Well, I'm afraid I can only give you a few moments. You see, I expect someone for supper. Well, I had to see you tonight, otherwise the whole thing would have fallen through. Well, did you get the agreement? Yes, and it must be back in Leicester by 12 tomorrow or the deal's off. Uh, you told me on the telephone you had trouble at the meeting. Plenty. At one time I thought it would all break down. One of them suddenly became very difficult. Why? I don't know. He was quite friendly at first. It was when I mentioned your name as my partner. He changed completely. Oh. And what was his name? Venner. Venner? Dr. Venner. Oh, yes. Dr. Venner, I remember. He used to run an asylum in London. <laughs> no, 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 don't be alarmed. I wasn't a patient. What did he say? Oh, don't hesitate. It wasn't very pleasant. It was in connection with a man named Hewson. Hewson? Oh, yes, Hewson. An unfortunate fellow I took some interest in. I gathered that. Yes. He was a builder who did some work for me here. And he had some sort of a breakdown. And you took him to Venner? Yes. Poor fellow, he's quite incurable. Apparently, he was not. What do you mean? He's out. Out! So this Dr. Venner told me. He said you might be interested to know. Uh, well, let's get back to business. Did he say where Euston was? No. Aren't you going to read it through? Good heavens, no. I employ a solicitor to do that sort of thing. But there isn't time. Oh, yes, there is. I've arranged it after your telephone from Leicester. He'll see you tonight in his private house as a special favor. But look here, I've driven a long way and I'm dead tired. It's only in Finchley. 143 Selby Road. Horrobin's the name. I shall have to start back for Leicester at nine in the morning. Oh, that's all right. You can be here by half past eight with a note from Horrobin okaying the agreement and I'll sign no, it. As a matter of fact, Then you I... can get away. I was hoping... You could put me up tonight. There are one or two bits of business we ought to talk over, and my wife's not expecting me. I'm afraid I shan't have time for business tonight. If you are so tired, why don't you stay at the Turkish bar? That would freshen you up for your drive to Nesta tomorrow. There's one other thing. What is it? I've got to find 500 pounds right away. I wondered if you'd advance it to me on account of my share in the Leicester deal. My dear Kurt, I've done nothing else but finance you ever since we met. You've done pretty well out of it all. Well, so have you. When we first met you, you were shabby, down at heel. Is there any need to remind me of that? Oh, it amuses me to think of it. So you won't help me? Well, why should I be expected to pay for your extravagance? Or is it your wife's? We'll leave my wife out of this, if you don't mind. As you wish. I'll go to your lawyer and be back in the morning. Uh, hello. Hello, is that you, Horobin? Carling speaking. The uh, curtain's on his way to you now. Well, you know what you've got to do. No, he must bring back a note from you advising me not to sign the agreement. I quite understand. I'll be waiting up for him. All right, Mr. Carling. I'll give Curtin the note you require. Good. Now listen. Houston's out. I know Houston's out. Dr. Venn is with me now. He's just arrived from Leicester. You'd better have a word with him yourself. Hello, Carling. Yes, I'm afraid Hewson's out. I couldn't keep him in any longer because he isn't certifiable any longer. It's no good blaming me. Even a private asylum has its responsibilities. I was compelled, don't you understand? Compelled to certify that he was cured and sane enough to be at large. I had no option. Don't talk to me like that, Carling. I took a hell of a risk in keeping him in for so long. I'll hand you back to Horrible. <laughs> oh, I am sure Dr. Venner did his best. He's as anxious about Houston being as large as you are. Well, he's got to be found. I don't care whether you have to employ every private detective in London. Do be reasonable, Mr. Carling. You know quite well that none of us dare employ any kind of detective. I'm telling you, Horrible, he's got to be found. Good night. You'd better come back first thing in the morning. Kirsten's on his way here, and it wouldn't do for you two to meet in my house.
nice house you have here. You do yourself well. Hey, look at that. Supper all ready. I couldn't have timed it better, could I? All oh, very good. Real swell setup. And you knew me right away, Mr. Carling. The name is Carling? It is. Christian name? Richard. Mm, excellent choice. So much depends on a name. Especially if it isn't your own. And you recognized me at once. Well, you haven't altered much. Pity I can't return a compliment. You have. You know, this house isn't easy to find. I came around earlier, but there was no answer. I wasn't in, and my housekeeper's away, ill. Uh, that accounts for it. Mm, I thought of writing and letting you know I was coming, but I thought you'd enjoy the surprise. It is a surprise, but... But what? Well, I'm afraid I haven't got much time. I, I expect someone. Mm -hmm. Another visitor? Champagne. Must be a swell dish. Is she on the telephone? Why? I just thought you'd like to give her a ring and tell her an old friend had turned up unexpectedly. I shall do nothing of the kind. Please yourself. I was only thinking of her. And with regard to that drink you were on the point of offering me, I'll take a scotch. And don't drown it. Cigarettes? What brings you here? You. Sent it. Mind if I sit down? Yes, you, my dear Mr. Carling. I had no other reason for coming. And if it hadn't been for seeing a picture in a magazine of some people in a restaurant, I wouldn't even have known my old friend was in London. And although my old buddy was fair-haired and wore a mustache, and Mr. Carling in the picture was dark and clean-shaven, I recognized him all right. There's nothing in that pocket, Richard. I don't carry a gun in England. And now you are here? Now that I am here. I'll have another drink. Stop beating about the bush. Sure. Why not? What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll kill you. Now, don't be absurd. Is it absurd? Now, Listen, Oliver, uh, let's be sensible. I admit uh, you've got some cause for complaint. Cause for complaint? Go on. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't come to an agreement. You mean money? Oh, what else? Sure, money is important. Now, if you'll come tomorrow morning, I'm sure we'll fix something. I admit I owe you some compensation. How much do you reckon it'll cost for all those years in jail you framed me for? The girl who died waiting for me. Those others who committed suicide because of you. You used to enjoy watching people suffer. Surrounding yourself with nerve-wracked, soul-sick and humiliated creatures was your idea of fun, wasn't it? Why do you worry over them? Just happen to be one of them, that's all. Do you reckon you have enough money to cover that? Now tell me what you want. I want another drink. I wonder what would happen if London discovered who Mr. Carling really is, or was. Hmm? And I wonder what the lady friend you're waiting for would say if she knew something else I know about you. That you're in such a financial mess, I have more money in my pocket right now than you have in the whole world. Put that down. Did you ever hear of a poem called Dante's Inferno? What do you mean? It's all about the different kinds of hell. And in the lowest region, the gentlemen who keep the devil company, 
are traitors. Kind of worries you, huh? I think it's a swell bit of culture myself. Base may be a bit heavy. Corners a little sharp. Compensation. Reasonable compensation for broken hearts and broken lives. You're willing to pay. You'll pay all right. <laughs> Garrett Stalls. Hello. I've made the tea, darling. Um, uh, oh, sorry, no, I was talking to my husband. Yes, this is Mrs. Millington. Well, the account. How is it? Oh, it hasn't been paid. Oh, dear. Well, that's my husband. You know what these authors are. They will forget things. Uh, yes. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about it, won't we? Look, would you give me the wine and spirits department, please? Yes, you're going to do. You wait and see. They won't send anything. You'd like to then? Yeah. <laughs> Darling, when you grow up, you'll realize when you've got an account you can't pay, the best thing to do is to order something else. Oh, thank you. This is Mrs. William Millington of Cranley Avenue Mansions. I would like you to send me round a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of gin. Bill goes you, that is, would you? And a bottle of gin as soon as possible and just charge them with the account, would you? Oh, yes. I'll hold on. Vera! Hello, Bill. Has my husband phoned? No. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, I'm afraid I should just have to talk to the chairman of the company. Uh, yes, of course I do. He happens to be my uncle. No, I didn't want you to know. I wouldn't like you to think I expected preferential treatment. Oh, that's quite all right. We'll say no more about it. You'll send them around at once, won't you? Thank you very much. Let's goodbye. I say, who is the chairman? I haven't the least idea. Well, Vera, so early? Has Jack telephoned? No, oh, thank goodness. Why should he? If he does, I want you to tell him that I've been staying the night here. What? Yes, you must say that I got nervous alone in the flat last night and I came round to you. There's no one here to know that I didn't. Lucky you can't afford a maid. D yes, yes, I see that now. Oh, Bill, 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 Yes, Oh, yes, yes. Oh, sorry, yes, sorry. Well, Jack went to Leicester yesterday. He wasn't supposed to be back till tomorrow afternoon. Oh, oh, I see. When I got to the flat this morning, I found his car outside. I couldn't go in. He'd obviously found the place empty and the bed not slept in. Oh, dear. Mm, that's very awkward. So I came straight here. It's the only thing I could think of. It's quite likely he'd guess I came to you. I did once before when he was away. Yes. What have you been doing? That doesn't matter. 
Oh, you brought your case with you, I see. Have you got your night things in it? Yes. Oh, I see. I thought I'd better listen so that we could all tell the same lies. You are going to help me, aren't you? Yes, Vera, we'll help. We always help. Thank you, dear. You're quite sure Jack's in the flat? I suppose so. He must be. I saw his car outside. Yes, he must be. What else could he be? There must be something wrong, officer. I've been ringing for half an hour. No servants. You're not living in. There's a housekeeper, but she's away ill. Huh. I don't like it. I'm going to get in somehow. Your responsibility, sir. If I can get the front door open, will you come in? Yes, if I was asked in. All right, will you wait here? I broke the window at the back. Look at the lights. It's still on. This is the dining room, officer. Shall I... It's darling. Oh, my... Take it easy, sir. Don't touch anything. Uh, nothing moved. No, sir. Uh -huh. Now, let's get this clear, Mr. Kirk. You identify the body as that of your partner in spite of the injuries to the face? Yes. You're quite sure? Yes, yes, quite. Well, now, you left here at quarter past eleven and went straight to the lawyer Hollowbin at Finchley. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Go on. Well, I was very annoyed with the way he treated me. He started finding quite unimportant faults with the agreement and said he would advise Carling not to sign it. We had a bit of a row, and I walked out. Uh, what time was that? Uh, just after quarter past twelve. And then? I was expecting Carling to put me up for the night, but he brushed me off to the Turkish baths. Uh, so you went straight to the Turkish baths from the lawyer's place at Finchley. Did you sleep at the Turkish baths? Yes. I had some engine trouble in the Finchley Road that held me up for half an hour, and I got there just after one o'clock. But surely all this isn't necessary? Nothing personal about it. It just says we know the movements of everyone concerned. What time did you leave the Turkish bars? Uh, just before nine. I went to my flat for a few minutes before coming here to have it out with Carling. And no doubt Mrs. Curtin will be able to confirm the time you got back this morning if we ask her. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid she can't. Really? Why not? Apparently, she, she wasn't at home last night. Oh, that must have been a bit of a shock for you. Yes, it was. And as you said, Mrs. Curtin wasn't expecting you back from Leicester for another day. Now, look here, Inspector. I'm not going to listen to any suggestions. Oh, no, please don't mistake me, Mr. Curtin. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. Uh, did you take any steps to find out where she was? No. No, I was in a hurry to get here. Of course. Why didn't I think that she probably went round to the Millingtons? She did once before when I was away. Uh, the Millingtons? Yes, they're friends of ours. Are they on the telephone? Yeah, it's uh, Chelsea 4358. Got your fingerprint? Yeah. Chelsea. 4358. Eight. Known them long? The Millingtons? Uh -huh. uh, quite some time. Oh, here they are. It's ringing. Hello? Hello, is that you, Steffi? Yes, it is. It's your husband. Yes, but who is that? Oh, Jack, I'm so sorry. Do you know, I didn't recognize your voice at first. Oh, yes, of course she's here. She's been here all night. She's still dressing, I think. Uh, well, of course. Yes, I'll call her. Vera? Vera? She's just coming, Jack. Is your husband, darling, pleasant surprise for you? Darling, you're back. How lovely. Wonderful surprise. Yes, it was stupid of me, I know, but I was nervous all alone. I had a horrid sort of feeling something might happen. Yes, that's marvellous. I'll wait for you. Goodbye, precious. It's coming round. So am I. Of all the exhibitions of lying I've ever seen... Oh, don't be seen. silly, darling. You ain't seen nothing yet. You go and do some more thinking. Well, there we are. Yes, now, I was nervous, remember? Yes, I know, dear. You still are. 
For heaven's sake, try to look as if you did stay here. Take your hat off. Oh, yes. Have you got Mr. Curtin's address and telephone number? Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much for being so helpful. Not at all. Oh, by the way, can you make anything of that? No, I'm afraid I can't. Do you always have that little stammer? Only when I'm... Nervous? No, 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 tired. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. For the present. Hmm? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that seems all right. Yes, that's what I don't like about it. I wish it had seemed all wrong. Look at that solicitor, Horobin. Horobin? Yes? Mr. Horobin speaking. Who? Inspector Mallory. What? Mr. Carney? Hmm. I take it you were his solicitor, Mr. Horobin. Mr. Curtin told us he saw you last night about an agreement. Yes, that's quite true. Mr. Curtin arrived here about 11.30 last night and stayed for about uh, three quarters of an hour discussing an agreement. He was very annoyed because I told him I couldn't advise Mr. Carling to sign it. Certainly, Inspector. You can be assured I, I'll help the police all I can. But Mr. Curtin isn't a client of mine. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Horobin. Yes, sounds a bit crooked to me, but I believe he was speaking the truth. Hmm. I'm a good deal more interested in Mrs. Curtin. I know what you're thinking, but that's impossible. Anyway, it solves a problem for us. We don't have to search for Houston. What was really behind Carling's treatment of Houston? I never found out. I only know it was something to do with Carling forcing Houston to build a secret chamber in Carling's house. Houston apparently rebelled, but Carling forced him to do it. What do you think Carling did to him? Well, I rather gathered that Carling himself attempted to brick him up alive in the secret chamber. In his moments of comparative sanity, he was always muttering something about brick on brick, or his brain being in a cloud. Is it your opinion that he's not entirely mad? He's certainly not mad enough now to be kept under restraint. I tell you, you can't go inside. You can't see anybody. What's all this about? He says he wants to see Mr. Carling, sir, and I've told him he can't. What's your name? Houston. Seems a bit, uh, you know, sir. What do you want to see Mr. Carling about? Oh, it's about some papers. Yes, some papers, yes. That's right. When did you last see Mr. Carling? Oh, I... I couldn't say that. Why not? Oh, it was... It was such a, a long time ago. A very long time ago, a very long time. Well, it was years ago? Yes, years ago. If, if I could only see him again, I... Well, you can't see Mr. Carling now. Yeah. Keep him on him. Very good. Yes, but he owes me some money, and there's some papers right. in there. Now, you there. be a good chap and clear I... off home. Go on, take my advice. I always knew you'd get yourself into a mess sooner or later. It's perfectly all right if you'll back me up. Yes, if we can make your husband believe you spent the night here when you didn't. You need to make it sound so awful. Oh, darling, it sounded like that for a few thousand years. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't lecture me. Is the Jack the only one we have to lie to? Or is there anybody else? Oh, of course. What do you mean? You won't let us down. I let you down. But I mean, if we go through with this, you will stick to your story. Yes, of course, Pepe. Yes, Bill, dear? This Vera business has given me a wizard idea for the end of a short story. All I want now is the beginning and the middle. Oh, darling, the cover's full of them. I raised them only the other day. Middle's in one pile, beginning's in another. We'll choose a nice one for me. Thank you, darling. Jack Curtin. Mr. Millington? Yeah. Yes. yes. Garage stores. Huh? A note for Mrs. Millington. Oh, I'll take it. Good day, Joe. Good day, sir. Thank you. Steffi, you won your bet. Mm, thought I would. Uh, well, I suppose this is the account. Yes. Uh oh. What is it now? Our chairman, Sir Henry Robinson, regrets he was unaware that he was your uncle. 
that he admires your spirit and hopes you will enjoy his. Oh, Jim! <laughs> oh, how lovely. What for? Jack, now for heaven's sake, you'll be careful what you say. Oh, I'll leave the big lies to you two. I'm not in your class. Remember what I told you? Stick to your story. Yes, all right. Hello, Jack. Come out in a few minutes. All right. Hello, Steffi. Hello, Jack. Dear as things. You won't be You look a bit of a wreck, old boy. I expect I do. I've had a pretty hectic time. Oh, well, then you better have a drink. How about a nice gin? I'd rather have whiskey if you've got it. I'll have one too, please, dear. It was sweet of you to have Vera. Oh, no, Jack, not a bit. We were very pleased to. I can't think why she was so nervous. Oh, well, it's just one of those things. I often feel like that when Bill is out alone. Great Scott. Do you? No, it isn't like that. Yeah? Oh, here I huh? Thank you. Harry? Right. Yeah? Yes, to the chairman. Bless him. <laughs> Who? Oh, no one you know, old boy. <laughs> Steffi's uncle. <laughs> Jack, you look all in. Here I am, darling. You look terrible. It gave me a bit of a shock to find the flat empty and the bed not slipped in. It must have done. I know. If I'd known you were coming back early, I'd have left a note saying where I was. Jeffy and Bill have been awfully kind. Oh, not a bit. After all, what's the use of friends? They can't Give help Give Vera her drink, darling. What was the matter? You're not usually nervous. Oh, I know it was silly of me, but I couldn't help it. Jane, Vera. Thank you, Bill. What brought you back from Leicester so quickly? Well, they wanted a new contract signed. I, I promised to be in Leicester with it by 12. You mean you're going back there today? Not now. In the circumstances. My partner... Carling was murdered last night. I came back last night with a new agreement for Carling to sign. It must have been just before 11. And he told me to take it at once to his lawyer at Finchley. I was to go back to Carling early this morning. Now, when I got to the house, there was no answer. I called a policeman and broke in through a window. We found Carling dead on the dining room floor. Do they know who did it? It looks as if there was a woman in it. Well, there is in most things, isn't there? Carling was obviously expecting a woman last night. He had a supper table laid out, flowers and everything, champagne, usual setup. It was all still there this morning. He could jolly good beginning to a novel, that. Or would it be the end? No, darling, we shall probably come to the end presently. What do you mean? Well, when they find them, who did it? Well, I must get to the office. Bring up Lester and try and straighten things out. I'm sorry, darling, we'll have to go back alone. Or could Vera stay here and I'll collect her later? Will I be in anyone's way? No, of course not, oh, It's very kind of you. No, no pleasure, I'll well, see you down at the car, darling. Goodbye, Stephanie. Uh, goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, Bill. Bye, Jack. Sure, I've been thinking. I'm so glad, dear. I don't like it. No, neither do I very much. It didn't seem fair lying to old Jack like that. He looked pretty rotten. I dare say you wouldn't be looking so good if your partner had just been murdered. Oh, look, silly, darling. I haven't got a partner. No, I'm not happy about it. Oh, Jack's quite capable of looking after himself. Steffi, I wonder what she really was doing last night. I don't think we'd better go into that. Not yet. Well, you don't think... What, dear? Well, she might... Steffi, see, it's all right. He believed it. Oh, oh did he? Well, whatever happens now, you've got to stick to your story. What do you mean? Now that we both lied for you. Well, you said whatever happens. There's nothing to happen. Oh. Oh, isn't that? I wonder. What are you looking at me like that for? Both of you. Look, don't do it. Now, don't lose your head, dear. You might need it. Oh. I don't like it. Shut up, dear heart. Must you go? You obviously don't want me here. I'm going. Aren't you making rather a fool of yourself, dear love? Dear love. Now, you remember what I said. You stick to your story. Give me a cigarette. Would you do? Mm, yes. Oh, dear. Last one. Mm. Oh. I'll get some more when I got. Great Scott, it's Thursday. Lunch with the old man. Oh, dear. Cigarettes. Mm. One shilling, two halfpennies, two pennies. One and three. Ah, 
Two empty beer bottles, four pence on each. Here are, dear. Oh. I'll bring back the change. And anything else I can touch the old man for? Bye, darling. Take care, sir. Mrs. Millington? Yes. Uh, I'm Inspector Mallory. I understand Mrs. Curtin's here. Uh, could I have a word with her? She was here, but she's left. She's gone home. Oh, in that case, uh, may I have a word with you? Uh, well, why not? She's coming. Sorry to bother you, Mrs. Millington. Oh, no. Not at all. Uh, you'd bother me so much more comfortably sitting down. I believe I ought to ask for warrants or identifications or... Oh, no, Inspector, please, don't bother. I'm, I don't think I should know if I saw it. I'm investigating the death of a Mr. Carling. Oh, well, I'm sure you're doing it very well. And that depends on how much help we can get. Uh, yes, yes, of course. I'm afraid what we call investigating involves asking questions which sometimes seem a little... Uh, Unnecessary. Well, yes, and personal, but I can assure you they're purely... A matter of routine. <laughs> you seem experienced, Mrs. Millington. Well... You see, my husband writes detective stories. Really? <laughs> well, ends and middles and beginnings. But, you know, routine always seems to come into them. <laughs> and now you'd like to know the present routine? Yes. Won't you sit down? I'm sorry, I haven't got any cigarettes to offer you. Don't allow I'm... me. Oh, thank you. Uh, you have an injured arm, Mrs. Millington. Oh, it's very clever of you to notice it. Well, you disguise it very well. Oh, it was just an accident. Recent? No. No, some time ago. Well, now, the routine. <laughs> oh, that's very simple. Mrs. Curtin's a friend of yours, I believe. Yes. We've taken a statement from our husband in connection with this case, and he told us that his wife stayed here last night. Oh, do you want to know if he was telling the truth? Oh, I suppose that's what it amounts to. Not that we doubt his word, of course. Oh, but... no, no, of course not, but you're just checking up. It's a matter of routine. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm sure you couldn't be, Mrs. Millington. Oh, don't be too sure, I'm... Uh, yes, Mrs. Curtin stayed here last night. At what time did you get here? Oh. Oh, now, let me think. What time would it be? Was it, um... Oh, yes, of course. It was half past ten. Exactly? Uh, well, a minute or two either way, you know. And how? Why do you... Remember so exactly. Yes, I knew that one was coming. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, now, um... Well, my husband had suddenly begun to think. He does sometimes, you know. He'd got an idea for the end of a short story... And I got him some black coffee, just to keep him awake while he was thinking. And I remember looking at the clock and wondering how long it would be before the coffee took effect. And it was just half past ten. I see. That seems very... Uh, very well thought out. <laughs> well, um, I don't think I need bother you any further. And may I say how grateful I am? Oh, not at all, Inspector. It's been a very pleasant little piece of... Uh, routine? <laughs> yes. I wish all my routine were as pleasant, Mrs. Millington. Oh, Inspector, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, you must come back again and have some more sometime. Yes. I do hope that arm isn't too painful, Mrs. Millington. Uh, oh, no. It's a long time since it hurt me. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, Mrs. Millington. <laughs> Hello, Miss Enroche? Oh, this is Mrs. Jack Curtin. I want a facial this afternoon, please. You can't? Oh, sure, you can manage something. Hello? Right away. Oh, it's very inconvenient. I'll come right away.
Operator, would you get me Mayfair 9398? I've had the engage signal three times now, nothing at all. Yes, please. This is Chelsea 4358. I thank you very much. Yes, please do. It's very important. Now, if you could possibly give us a line-out on any of these lady friends... I've already told you I didn't know anything about his private affairs. Ours was purely a business association. Still, you might have heard. I knew nothing whatever about his friends, men or women. I didn't want to. He certainly weren't my friend. Look here, Sergeant, I've already told you and the inspector everything I can. And it's no use asking me any more questions. You really must let me get on with my business. But it's quite obvious that you're better off by his death. And money hasn't been too plentiful lately, has it? What are you getting at? There's a writ out against you from a firm of dressmakers. And you owe 500 to a moneylender who's been threatening you. What do you mean by snooping into my affairs? Just routine, sir. Discretion's our middle name. You'd be surprised the number of things we don't tell. I've nothing more to say. Very good, sir. Thank you. I, uh, I suppose you've known the Millingtons some time. Yes, they're uh, more my wife's friends than mine. I think you said that Mrs. Curtin stayed the night with them once before when you were away. Yes, she did. What of it? Did she happen to say what time she went round there last night? No, she didn't. And what on earth has that to do with you? Very good, thank you, sir. Much obliged. I hope we shan't have to bother you again, sir. So do I. Get me Mrs. Millington's flat. Hello, Mrs. Millington speaking. Oh, hello, Jack. Uh, oh, just a minute, dear. There's somebody at the door. Mrs. Millington? Yes. Export Fashion Company. Thank you very much. I'm afraid I've given all my change to the milkman. I would have liked to give you five bob. Like a nice apple instead? No, thank you, ma'am. I wouldn't. I belong to the No Tipping League, and I like climbing five flights of stairs. I hope what's inside will fit you. Sorry, Jack. It was just my dress and cloak for this evening. No, Vera went home soon after you left. She felt she wouldn't stay after all. Police at your office. Oh, how very trying for you. Have they found out who did it? They made up their minds there was a woman in it. They as good as suggested they had a clue, but they wouldn't say what it was. I can't understand the questions they've been asking. They even wanted to know what time Vera went round to you last night. Did they? Whatever for? It's got nothing to do with them. Oh, I suppose they just get into the habit of asking questions. I shouldn't worry about it too much, Jack. Bye. Yes. Uh, my name is Mallory, Detective Inspector Mallory. Oh, I'm afraid my husband's not in. You'll find him at his office. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mrs. Curtin, but you are all the ones to work with. Me? Yes, uh, if you don't mind. I won't keep you very long. If it's about Mr. Carling, I'm afraid there's nothing I can tell you. Oh, well, there are just one or two points in which you may be able to help. I'd very much rather you saw my husband. It's his business, not mine. I understand you spent last night at the Millingtons. Yes. What time did you get to the Millingtons, Mrs. Curtin? What on earth does that matter? I'd just like to know. Must have been just after 11. Just after 11. 
And uh, were the Millingtons both at home when you arrived? Yes. And you're quite sure it was just after 11? Certainly wasn't before. Oh, well, of course. The night porter here would have seen you leave. There isn't a night porter. <laughs> really? Well, there ought to be, considering the rent you must be paying. <laughs> Does your mother sleep in? She usually leaves at six o'clock, but her husband's home on leave, so she has a few days off. <laughs> Well, there's really nothing else I can tell you. I'm sorry, I can't answer any more questions. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to go. Hmm. Hadn't you better answer the telephone, Mrs. Curtin? Hello? Oh, it's you. I thought it might be... can't speak now. You are not alone. Oh. It wouldn't be an Inspector Mallory by any chance, would it? Oh, it is. Well, now, listen, Vera, you stick to your story, do you understand? And another thing, you got here last night at... Hello? Hello? <coughs> yes, I got cut off. They hung up. Oh. oh, no, I'm sorry, not you. No, it's all right. It doesn't matter. To revert to last night, Mrs. Curtin. I refuse to answer any more questions. Do you often stay with the Millingtons when your husband's away? Yes. I mean, no. I did once or twice. I can't remember. But last night you felt rather nervous here alone. Well, what's odd about that? Oh, nothing at all. But you quite sure it was after 11 when you got to the Millingtons? Oh, really? I... I... Mrs. Curtin, it's generally people who have something to hide who object to answering questions. Surely you have nothing to hide. Or have you? You're very rude. There's just one more question, Mrs. Curtin. I refuse to answer. Did you stay last night at the Millingtons? Did you? How dare you? I can't force you to answer. Please go. May I remind you, it's the duty of everybody to help the police, particularly in a case of murder. Is that a threat? No, just very well meant advice. I brought my new dress round to show you. Well, if it isn't Inspector Mallory again. More routine? Come in, Steffi, dear. Inspector's going. I'm afraid I'm rather annoyed, Mrs. Curtin. Oh, have you? How did you do that? Inspector's been asking questions about last night. Oh, has he? He seems to find it difficult to believe that I was staying with you. No. I thought I'd convinced him of that. I assure you we don't ask unnecessary questions. Good day, Inspector. It was lucky you got here just in time, Mrs. Millington. Yes. Yes, wasn't it? Yes. Good afternoon. Could I, uh... Could I, uh... If you want to see my husband, he isn't here. My name is Houston. I'm... I'm Houston. It's... It's very particular. Mr. Curtin isn't here. It's very particular. You see, I wanted to get into Mr. Carlinger's house, but the police wouldn't let me, so I thought I ought to get in touch with his partner, Mr. Curtin. I found his address in the, in the Terry film directory, but now that Carlinger's dead... How did you know that? It hasn't been made public. I knew it. As if a black cloud was lifting from my brain. Ooh. There's nothing to be afraid of here. No, sir. Come sit down. Steffi, mm -hmm. I must talk to you. Yes, in a minute. What did you want Mr. Curtin for? I thought as he was Mr. Carling's partner, he'd know about his papers. Where they were. Uh, there's something among his papers you want? Yes. Were you in business with Carling? I'm a builder. At least I, I was a builder. You were? I, I've, I've been away a long time. I, 
I think I was ill. But I'm not now, I, I know I'm not. No, of course you're not. You see, I want to get back to my work. You know, it's wonderful to build something, to see a wall go up, brick on, brick on, did, brick. Did you ever build anything for Carly? Yes, I did. Something that was... Was what? I, I can't remember. I was, I was terribly afraid. I, I can't remember. If I could only see his papers, I was afraid. Oh. No, 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 no. Not now. He's dead. Did you kill him, Mr. Hewson? I? Uh, oh, no. I'm not strong enough. I haven't seen him for a long time. I wish I knew who... Who did, though. I'd like to thank him. Why don't you take him away somewhere if you want to ask him all these questions? This isn't a police station. I'm sorry, Mrs. Curtin. Now, you go along home, Mr. Hewson. If I find anything amongst Carling's papers which concern you, I'll let you know. Couldn't I come with you and look for myself? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll be finishing up at Carling's house at about uh, 8 o'clock. You come along then, and I'll see what I can do. Goodbye, Mrs. Curtin. Goodbye. Thank you for being so very kind to me. Goodbye, Mr. Houston. I'm sure the inspector will help you. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, inspector. I think I'll see the door shut this time. <laughs> Au revoir, Mrs. Millington. Au revoir. Hello, Vera. Is Steffi here? Yes, she's in there. Oh, good. Hello, Steffi, darling. Hello, Bill. Just got back and saw your note and rushed over as fast as I could. I'm afraid I interrupted your visitors, Vera. Stiffy, darling. What a peculiar little man that was. Think so? He didn't want any papers, you know. Stiffy, darling. You mean he was lying? Yes, Stiffy, can I get a word in edgeways? Yes, darling. Give me a cigarette. Uh, darling, it's about the police. Oh. They picked me up this morning. Started asking me a whole lot of questions. What about? Oh, nothing very much, really. Mostly about what time Vera got to our flat last night. What time? And did you know I had an absolute brainwave. I said it was the same time as the light program news. That was the touch that did it. Ten o'clock. Oh. What's wrong with that? I said it was 11. Oh, no. Well, if you think it's a joke. Yes, dear, it is. What's funny, darling? I said half past ten. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. It's all very well for you to laugh. Jack will find out. Oh, shut up, you silly little fool. Shut up. There was a fool ever to come to you. Oh, you were a fool long before that. Steffi. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what we all said as long as you stick to your story, don't you understand? Yes, but if we all said, the police can't disprove anything until they find out where you really were last night. Bella. Ah, uh, Jack. Hello, everybody. Oh, what a day. You look very tired, Jack. I'm dead. Well, just wait. You will, dear. Get my box, would you? Yes, I thought I'd never get here. The police have been round to the office. Don't bother to see us out. Goodbye, dear. You go back. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Jack. Darling, be an angel and get me a drink, will you? I'm all in. Have you got anything on anybody yet? Hmm? I don't know. A man called Hewson has been here asking for you. Hewson? Hmm. Said it was about some papers of Carling's. You went away with the inspector. Inspector Mallory? Oh, is that his name? I shan't be a minute. What did he want? I really can't go over all that again. Vera! Was it about your going to the Millingtons last night? Oh, Jack, please. Come here. I said, come here, I want to talk to you. Sit down. You're hiding something, aren't you? I don't know what you mean. Why are the police so interested in what you did last night? I don't know, and I don't care. I'm tired. I want the truth, and I'm going to get it. Very well, you shall have it. I didn't go to Steffi's last night. I didn't go there till this morning when I saw your car outside here. So you were lying all the time. And you persuaded Steffi and Bill to lie too. You why shouldn't they, my friend? What did you do last night? Was it that gambling place at Brighton again? Will you answer? Yes, it was. After you gave me your word. Well, you shouldn't have made me promise. It wasn't fair. Did you lose much? Vera! Yes, I did, and I don't care! Is 
didn't you? Just cross examine. I went on very long questions from you or anyone else. Extravagance. There's a writ out against me from those dressmakers of yours, and I had to borrow 500 pounds from a moneylender last time to get you out of trouble with those Brighton people and save your face. Now you're doing it again. I tell you, you've nearly ruined me. Ruined you, my foot. You've got the business all to yourself now. That's nothing to do. Now you'll be able to talk about your business all night, too. I'm fed up. Forward and fed up. You do nothing and you think nothing but business, 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 morning, noon, and night. It's fortunate for you that I have. It was the money you threw away that made me. Made you what? You do get the business. All of it. Huh? What are you getting at? Mary, that all this talk about being ruined cuts no ice with me. Let your beastly business take up the whole of your life. I may as well not exist. Any wonder I try to get a bit of amusement elsewhere. I still don't see where the police come in. I don't know. Leave me alone, can't you? <laughs> Is Inspector Mallory there, by any chance? Yes, the inspector's here. It's for you, sir. K -k -k curtain Hello? Yes, Mr. Curtin? What's that? Uh-huh. I see. What's the address? Uh, 23 Fortescue Mansions, Brighton. Yes, yes, I agree. It would have saved quite a bit of trouble if she'd said so in the first place. All right, Mr. Curtin. Goodbye. Get that address? Yes, sir. Well, that's where the curtain woman now says she was last night. So what do these people think we are? What have you found now? This, sir, in Carling's papers. Nothing on the envelope. It links up with the writing on the wall. Uh -huh. To the police. If I'm found murdered, look for James C. Oliver of Chicago and New York. He considers he has a grievance against me and has repeatedly threatened my life. Richard Carling. Huh. No date. Sounds a bit phony to me. Could be. We'll soon find out. Oliver is here. He arrived Wednesday. Yes. Looks as if he didn't have time to put in the date. Well, if there is a James C. Oliver and he was here, he probably put up at some hotel somewhere. Call the yard and tell him I'm on my way. Then get Webster to check the airports and sailing lists for the past four weeks. I'll cover the hotels. Yes, sir. Uh, get on to Brighton and see what they can find out from that address. Very good, sir. Oh, oh! The zip's got caught up on something. It's me, dear. Pull it down again. No blood, darling. I'll try again. I might draw some next time. Now, ready? Now. Ah. The police? Come to arrest us? Might be. Ah, all those lies and things. Larceny, or whatever they call it. We'll ask them to handcuff us together, darling. Uh -huh. Hello, Jack. Yeah. Hello. All dressed up, too. Come in. Well, Steffi. I told Jack the truth about where I was last night. Yes? I thought you would. I couldn't keep it up any longer. It's been a good thing, really. I've been too wrapped up in business. Vera and I are going to understand each other better in the future, aren't we? Yes, darling. Good. Let's go out for a drink. Of course, I know you and Bill only did what you did to help Vera. Well, we all have to do things we'd rather not do sometimes. Don't you, Jack? Did you tell anybody else? The police. Did they make any comment? No. Didn't they say why they'd been so anxious to prove that Vera hadn't stayed with us? I didn't ask. I'm glad the questioning's over. Yes. I think it is, very nearly. What do you mean? I knew you wouldn't have the guts to stick to your story, Vera. Well, it doesn't make any difference to you. That's just where you're making a big mistake. You were only helping me. No, dear. You thought we were giving you an alibi, but you were really giving me one. It's just what I wanted. Someone who could prove I was here from 11 o'clock onwards. Why on earth should you need an alibi? You thought the inspector was bothering about Vera. Hmm. He wasn't, dear. 
was me he was after. And he couldn't get at me until he'd broken down Vera's story. Why should he be after you? Because he knew I was at Carling's house last night. Jeffy! You knew Carling? Yes, Bill. And you were there last night? Yes, dear. Then you... Then I what? But, but I was... Oh, you were sleeping like a little chloroformed pig when I left the flat. That's a nice thing, I must say. Wouldn't it be better if we all sat down? No, I dashed to pass it down. Oh, now, do, dear. You can always get up again if you want to. Oh, I must say, I'm surprised. Uh, yes, I thought you would be, Vera. You never told me you knew, Carling. Why, no, of course not, Bill. I knew you wouldn't approve of the acquaintance. I should think not, of course. You're my wife. Yes, I know, dear. No. Oh, it's all very well expecting me to sit down. Very few husbands would. Bill, dear. You're one of the few best ones. But supposing I'd woken up and found you gone. Well, well, this has nothing to do with us. Come along, Jack. Aren't you going to stay and see me arrested? Arrested? What for? The murder of Carling. But you didn't do it. How can I prove that? I might have been all right if Vera had stuck to her story. Now that she hasn't, I'm sunk. But they can't possibly accuse you. They say I was the last person with Carling. Do you think they're likely to believe me if I swear he was alive when I left? How could the police know you were at Carling's house last night? Well, I've been wondering about that. I think I must have slipped up somewhere. Or perhaps they found the driver of the taxi I took and got a description of me. Well, anyway, they know I was there, and that's that. Bill. Darling, I never let Carling so much as put the tips of his fingers on me, and I never meant to. But you said... No, dear, I didn't say. You thought. Don't see what else you could have thought when you admitted going to Carling's house like that. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, dear. But why did you go? Now, look, Bill, I'm not going to explain anything now. You can believe me or not, as you like. Of course I believe you. Well, I know what I'm thinking. Yes, dear. You're thinking it's a pity Jack's such a light sleeper. I'm going. I won't stay. Jack, would you be kind enough to induce your wife to sit down? We must stay, Vera. There's no reason whatever. Yes, there is. See who that is, Bill? Sit down, Vera. Yes. I'm Inspector Mary. Is Mr. Curtin here? May I come in? Yes, of course. Oh, yes, I see he is. Good evening. Good evening. Well, Inspector, you're back again. How very nice. Oh, we thought perhaps you might... Yes, look in again? Yes. I suppose you know Mrs. Curtin has... Oh, for heaven's sake. Yes, I was afraid she wouldn't stick to her story. But you mustn't mind her. You see, she hasn't had my experience. She'll do better next time. Yes. Well, I hope not. It's a serious matter, deceiving the police. Well, of course, I knew why you were trying to break down her story. Steffi. Um, wouldn't you like to sit down? Uh, no, of course not. You can't arrest people sitting down, can you? I beg your pardon? Well, I suppose I might as well admit, I was at Carling's house last night. Mrs. Millington, we've reached a point where we must have the truth and nothing but the truth. You do admit you were at Carling's house last night. It saves time, doesn't it? You realise the seriousness of your admission? Naturally, Inspector. Were you there at the time of the murder? Uh, no. Can you prove that? No, I'm afraid I can't. What time did you get there? Oh, 12 o'clock. Was Carling alone? Oh, yes. Was he expecting you? Eagerly. So you were the visitor who was going to suffer? Yes, it was all for me, flowers and all. Uh, were you in the habit of visiting his house late at night? No, police or no police, I'm dashed to follow It's all right, you. darling, it's all right. This is just routine. Mrs. Millington, what time did you leave? Half past 12. So you were there only half an hour? Well, you see, I left because somebody else came. Who was it? I don't know. I went into another room, naturally. Could you hear them talking? Only very faintly, Inspector, but it was enough to know that it was a man. And whilst they were in the dining room, I slipped out of the house. So we've only your word for it that there was another visitor. I'm afraid so. And your word hasn't been very reliable so far, has it? Well, no, I suppose it hasn't, really. You understand the position you put yourself into by these admissions? Perfectly. Well, Mrs. Millington. No, Inspector. It's no good, darling. You can't arrest her. She didn't do it. Just a minute. Mrs. Millington has told the truth. Go on, Mr. Curtin. How do you know? I went back to Carling's house last night, and I can testify that he was alive and well when she left. Jack! What are you 
say? Keep out of this, Vera. So it was you who came to Carling's house? Yes. What made you go back to the house at that time? I was so furious when I left the solicitor at Finchley that I went back to have it out with Carling. How long did you stay? Only a few minutes. And he was alive when you left? Very much so. So all your story about being held up on the Finchley Road was invented to allow for the lapse of time before getting to the Turkish baths, when you were really at Carling's house? I must say, it's not easy getting the truth out of you people. Inspector, I wish you'd tell me something. How did you know I'd been to Carling's house? You tell me just now. I had no idea of it before. <laughs> well, I... Why did you come here? For the pleasure of calling us liars? No, Mrs. Millington. I came to ask Mr. Curtin a question. I went to his flat first. He wasn't there, so I tried here. But what is it? Did Carling say he was expecting a third visitor? No. Do you remember him mentioning the name Oliver? Uh, Jim Oliver? Oliver? Uh, yes. Yes, I think I do remember his mentioning the name some time ago. Can you remember what he said? I think he said something about Oliver being the only man he was afraid of. He was talking of the time he was in America. Uh, why, Inspector? It seems pretty certain he turned up last night. How did you find that out? We have our methods. Have you traced him? No, not yet. He can't get away. Well, I'm glad I'm not in this Mr. Oliver's shoes. May I give you all a word of advice? If any of you have any dealings with the police again, tell the truth at the beginning. Makes it so much easier for everybody. Good night, you all. Inspector, I understand you're seeing that Mr. Houston again at 8 o'clock this evening, aren't you? Houston? I expect so. Why do you ask? It was just that I felt rather sorry for him. I do hope you'll find what he wants. We'll do our best. Good night. Good night. Now, can we go? It's very late. Yes, so am I. Jack, would you give me a lift to the Fashion Fair Gala? Yes. Yes, of course, Stephanie. Thank you. We'll wait for you in the car. Good night, Bill. Good night, Jack. Well, darling? You've got plenty of middles and beginnings to work on now, haven't you? I've got to think of an end. I'll try and find one for you. Shan't be late. Look after yourself. Thanks, Jack, for telling the inspector that Carling was alive when I left the house. You'd have been in a tough spot if I hadn't. Yes, I know. Were you thinking of going to Carling's place later on this evening? Why? Don't. Are we parked here for Good the night, night or what? Good night. Get me a taxi, quick, yes, you? It's a man here called Houston. So he has an appointment with you, sir. Oh, well, tell him I'm sorry, but we haven't been able to find anything referring to him. We're packing up here. Get your coat. Yes, sir. Hello? That you, Horton? Oh, I'm finished here. The picked up Oliver yet? Oh. Oh, well, never mind. See you in the morning. Blighter seems to have opted, sir. Not a sign of him anywhere. Nice night. Good to have a breath of fresh air. I think I'll walk with you to the station. Yes, sir.
the keys. I shan't want it anymore. You look charming. Yes, of course I do. I'm going to a party. I hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure I shall. By the way, I thought I was the only one in the secret. It appears I wasn't. Who is? Jack Curtin. How do you know? When he told his little story about coming here and finding your body, I knew he must be in it. Did he tell you? A situation arose in which, as a decent fellow, he had to admit he was here after I left. He had no business to admit it to anyone. You needn't be afraid of him. He lies almost as well as I do. So you made him identify Oliver's body as yours. I wondered what you were going to do. No, oh, it was quite simple. Uh, you see, it was in my house. We put Oliver in a suit of mine, my papers were on him, and uh, my partner identified him as me. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Anyway, Oliver's face wasn't recognizable. Tough, aren't you? I've had to be. I suppose you made it worth Curtin's while to take the risk. Oh, he wanted money badly. You were able to give it to him? It was Oliver's. He told me he had more money on him than I had in the world. <laughs> and he was right. Oh, you do have the luck of the devil, don't you? <laughs> they say he looks after his own. Uh, yes. You make a very nice getaway from all your troubles, financial and otherwise, with Oliver's money. Uh-huh. I think you were very wise to give yourself a hideout in the house. I bet he could tell some tales. <laughs> Unlike a woman, he doesn't. Where is it? Is it in the roof? Oh, my dear Steffi, I prefer to remain a hideout. Is there a way in here, really? There are two ways in and two ways out. I met a charming little person this afternoon at the Curtin's flat. He said his name was Houston. What? That rat! And he said he once built something for you. He couldn't quite remember what it was. Oh, he's off his head. He's been in an asylum. Yes, he had a breakdown just after he finished that building job for you. What did you do to him? Better not ask. Would you tell me something? Anything. Is there any possibility of your changing? Well, I shouldn't think so. I hope not. Wherever you go, you'll always be the same. Well, that's the way I was made. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. Well, let's talk about you. I didn't think there was a woman in the world who could get me down. But you have. I appreciate the compliment. If Oliver hadn't come last night... Oliver I... or no Oliver, it wouldn't have been any use. Have you been playing with me? Yes, perhaps I have. And don't you think it might be a, a dangerous game? All the best games are dangerous. What do you mean? Have you given me away? No. I, I thought you had. I could have given you up to the police, not come back. I didn't want you to be hanged. I wanted to kill you myself. What? You want to kill me? Of course, we've both changed a good deal since then. Who are you? It was in 1942. I was in France, in the resistance movement, helping British airmen to get away. It was there I met my husband. But the Germans got me. They sent me to a camp in Germany. It wasn't a very pleasant place. The world heard a great deal about that camp later on. Most of the people in charge were caught and hanged. You got away. The commandant used to amuse himself with the prisoners. One day he was a little bored. He wanted a little target practice. So he used me tied up against the wall. The idea was, I suppose, to see how near he could get without actually hitting me must have been out of form. The last two went into my left arm. Don't you remember her commandant, Otto Steiner? Don't, don't you? Put that down. You stay where you are. 
I have no intention of being killed, I assure you. You killed yourself when you had Oliver's body identified as yours. <laughs> Extraordinary. I don't even remember you. No, no. Up against the wall, eh? Well, show me. Go on, move. Right arm will do. Now I remember you. Well, well, well. Small world. That gives me a chance to complete the job. I hate to leave things unfinished. There's nothing to be afraid of now. Is he dead? Yes. I think that after all he should have died without knowing by whose hand. Oh, you needn't be afraid of that. I wouldn't harm you. Yours? You must leave nothing in this place. I... Sh I thought perhaps I... I'd see you again. Don't be afraid of me. I'm not mad. I never was. Oh. Oh. You must go away now and forget that you've ever seen me. What about you? I have a plan. There's nothing that you can do. beautiful cloak, just as it should be. I shall remember you with gratitude, always. And I you. Police, I want to leave a message for Inspector Mallory. It's very, very particular. My name's Hewson. Y yes, Hewson. I've just executed Richard Carling. I'm at his house, waiting. <laughs> 